Thank you, Jason. Good morning. morning. Another beautiful Sunday on the lawn. We ordered this just for you. <laughs> we've got cloud cover. We've got shade. We've got lovely temperatures. Um, it's the 12th Sunday after Pentecost, and the liturgists today are going to be Betsy Burke and uh, Alexis Nelson. There are a number of, of announcements. But before we get too far into this, I would like to uh, acknowledge that we are supposed to be having flowers today, but because we moved outside, we don't have the flowers that we had anticipated. Um, Elizabeth, An Elizabeth Anderson died two years ago? Two years ago on this date, Don Lewis's mother. And um, Kate wanted us to have flowers in her memory. And somehow in the, in the move outside and the other things, it got tangled up in, uh, in the church office. And I apologize for that. But Elizabeth Anderson was a force around here. And we know that her son was a force around here. And so we need to remember her in our prayers. We have a number of other announcements. Uh, for, before we get too far along, there are bulletins over here under the covered portico and Musana is waving bulletins at you. And so uh, they're, they're available. And that's also where you can put your uh, collections. And uh, so let's do that either now or later. Um, Liana. Actually, Liana, I am going to just lower this so we can get back. Hi, my name is Liana Noll. I play trumpet for the Mark Newtown High School Marching Band. I'm selling moms as a fundraiser that supports the band program throughout the year. This fundraiser also helps me participate in the many band activities throughout the year. If you would like to support the band that and purchase moms, the cost is eight dollars per plan. Please place your order by August 31st. Payment can be made by cash, checks, or Venmo. Cash and checks can be given to my dad, my mom, or myself. Mums will be in eight-inch pots and will be available in five different colors. 
Your moms will be delivered to church September 12th and will be distributed immediately after the church service. There are flyers under the portico for more information. Thank you. Thank you, Liana. We have a long tradition of supporting band candy, band fruit, uh, lots of other band fundraisers in this church. Um, the Deacon's Fund is still in need of your support. And I was told by my wife that if you are bringing uh, canned goods or any special things for the food pantry, the food pantry could use tuna. So there's tuna. Uh, we're, we're planning uh, a number of things in the church. We have on September 19th, we're going to be dis they're all discussing via Zoom and led by Rona, uh, we're gonna be discussing a book cast. And uh, it apparently is a very good follow on to the White Fragility book that we read before. Don't forget that October 24th is Jonathan's installation. If you would like to be involved in that as a volunteer, and there's a lot of things to do, see Luciana, who's waving over there. Blue stripes, looks like she's in the Navy. Um, uh, it, it's going to be a wonderful event, but it's not going to be the regular church service. It's going to take place after the church service, so um, it'll be in the afternoon. We don't have many of the particulars yet about that. Um, maybe we'll learn about it more at the session meeting this week. This week, we have a number of uh, meetings. Uh, Presby players will be meeting after the service. Uh, they'll be rehearsing outside somewhere over here. The deacons will be meeting on the driveway right there. I would suggest you have a chair and bring a chair. Um, and there are chairs here because the driveway is very hard and very dirty. Um, if you have an announcement that you'd like to be read or recited or some, I don't think we've done that yet. We'll get, well, well I, I'm pointing at somebody. We could get a, an announcement sign. Yeah, I think she's done one, at least one or two. Um, uh, please get it to Harry Rickards by Thursday at noon. By Thursday at noon. Um, new office hours are uh, Tuesday and Thursday, 11 to 3, and Wednesday and Friday, 9 to 2. There are some other meetings this week. Music and worship will be meeting Monday uh, evening on Zoom at seven o'clock. And the session will be meeting, I believe it's 7.30, Bill, is that it? Yes. 7.30 yes. On, on Tuesday to try to figure out a plan for our, how we're gonna engineer and figure out returning to the sanctuary. Um, Sadly, the numbers in Delaware County are going in the wrong direction still. So um, I think that's all I have, which is a lot. And I'd like to introduce Margaret Stevens. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Do we have any visitors today? Anyone here for the first time? Okay, welcome everybody. Whether you've been here the first time, second time, the millionth time, welcome. It's nice to see everyone. It's a nice breeze, so we're not all sweating, which is great. Um, I just have one announcement. Um, October 10th is going to be our annual community day and flu vaccine. Last year we did a drive through, you know, in the middle of the pandemic. Not sure what we're going to do this year, if it's going to be a drive through or if it's going to be. Um, um, you know, inside or how are we going to do it, but um, spread the word. I'll get more information as we get closer to the date. If anyone's interested in sort of being on my committee, I don't actually remember who was on the committee the past years, but if you would like to help, um, that would be great. So again, um, thank you. Welcome, welcome, and have a good day. Please join me in our call to worship.
with voices and instruments, with hearts and with hands. We play, we play music, music for, for our God. God. At all times, with each person, in every place, through every moment, we, we give, give thanks in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Turn away from evil, doing good at every chance, seeking peace and sharing hope everywhere. We will walk in the Spirit's way. Continue with our prayer of invocation. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that all people may know the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. us just waiting to catch us using the wrong words doing the dumb thing hanging out with troublemakers but the truth is god watches us in love in hope in grace just waiting to forgive us whenever we mess up let us bring our messy lives to god as we pray our prayer of confession together 
It is not easy to admit, watching God, that we are not very careful with our lives. We could find a home in your heart, but seem to stay in the Airbnb run by fear. We could sip the spirit's best vintage, yet get drunk on cheap bottles of bitterness. We could learn your ways of wise choices, but prefer sin's silly paths. Forgive us, God of mercy. Remind us that we no longer need to live in the old ways or to yearn for those good old days. But we are free to listen to your hopes, to learn from your heart, and to walk with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Please take a moment for confession. God, in your mercy, for our prayer. Are you watching what God does as love embraces us, as grace forgives us, and hope gives us the wisdom to walk in God's ways? Our God restores our lives with the peace of the Spirit, so we may feast on the gifts of mercy and grace offered to us by the bread of heaven. Thanks be to God. We are forgiven. Amen. Chapters 9, verses 1 through 6. Wisdom built her house. She has carved out her seven pillars. She slaughtered her animals, mixed her wine, and set her table. She sends out her female servants. She issues an invitation from the shop of the city heights. Whoever is naive, turn aside here, she says to those who lack sense. Come eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Abandon your simplistic ways and live. Walk in the way of understanding. Thank you, Alexis. Our second scripture reading comes from 1 Kings chapter 2 and then continuing in chapter 3. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Then David slept with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. The time that David reigned over Israel was 40 years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father, David, and his kingdom was firmly established. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father, David, only he sacrificed and offered incense at the high places. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the principal high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God asked, Ask what I should give you. Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. 
and you have kept him kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today and now O lord my god you have made your servant king in place of my father although i am only a little child i do not know how to go out or come in and your servant is is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen a great people so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern before, between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself an understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. I give you also that which you have not asked, both riches and honor, all your life. No other king shall compare with you. And if you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want a God like this. King David, the king of all Jewish kings, the one who united the northern and the southern tribes in Jerusalem has just died. And then in the verses where we skipped between chapters two and chapter three, we're told of how Solomon, who no one thought would be king, proceeds to consolidate his power by forcing certain people out of the country and by killing others. As one scholar puts it, Solomon's succession, though sympathetically presented, remains a coup. And then after he is indisputably the king of Israel, he marries outside of the faith to one of the daughters of the Egyptian pharaoh, solidifying peace between themselves and their southern neighbor empire. Then in this act of public devotion, Solomon goes to the town of Gibeon for a public sacrifice. Why Solomon just didn't stay in Jerusalem to make his sacrifice at the Ark of the Covenant, which we know was there, we'll never know for sure. Perhaps it is because this city, Gibeon, is strategically located at the crossroads between the northern and the southern kingdoms that David has just united. So it might have been a way of connecting the two areas. We're told that Solomon went to the high place there and made a sacrifice on that altar. We don't know exactly who he's making this sacrifice to. It's not told to us explicitly. We assume it might be to the Jewish gods, the God of Jacob and Abraham and Isaac, but that's just an assumption. From later accounts, we know that Solomon didn't have much of a problem making sacrifices to the other gods, the god of all the wives that he would eventually take as well. So he goes to this high place, and after making some objectively questionable decisions before this, he makes his sacrifice and then has this dream. This dream where God appears to him and he is offered whatever he wants. And that's what I'm talking about. After all of these questionable things, after marrying outside of faith, which was a big deal for the Israelites at that time, killing off his political rivals, potentially making a sacrifice to another god, in the story, the god of Israel still shows up like the genie from Aladdin and is like, poof, hey, Solomon, how are you doing there? What can I do for you today? Oh, wisdom beyond measure? Okay, yeah, sure, no problem. You got it. Oh, and while I'm at it, Here's some honor and some riches and some long life just because you're a great guy. Who does that? Really, who does that? That's why I want a God like this. Because I want a God that even after I do something bad, still shows up and gives me unquestionably whatever I want. Who doesn't want that kind of God? Anybody? That's an actual question, right? We all want that kind of God, I think, at some point. We want the kind of God that gives us what we want, when we want it, or when we need it. 
But the problem is, is that no one actually gets that God. No one is given what Solomon is said to have gotten in his dream. And the reason for that, potentially, is because probably Solomon didn't get that dream either. By all accounts, Solomon ruled over the United Kingdoms of Israel and Judah during what became its first golden age. The empires around Israel at this point in history were having their own internal struggles, and that led to smaller kingdoms like Israel being able to exert their own sovereignty in a way that they hadn't been able to do so before in history. And after David died, Solomon came in to fill this power vacuum. Then he began these major public works programs like building the first temple and building more roadways and city fortifications for other cities around the kingdom to help the kingdom prosper. The Israelites had never seen anything like this in their history before. They were safe, they were prosperous, and apparently not being attacked from beyond their borders. Sounds nice. So by all of these markers, Solomon's reign as king was a major success. And he did all of this despite knowing, or knowing now what we know now, despite having broken some of the pretty important major theological rules of the Torah. Like I mentioned beforehand, beginning in chapter three, talks about how Solomon married one of the daughters of the Egyptian pharaohs. That act explicitly went against the teachings given to the Israelites in Deuteronomy, where they had been told not to intermarry with other groups because it would mean that their children would potentially grow up to worship foreign gods. For the writers and the editors of the book of Kings, we know that this was seen as a huge no-no. And in the end of Solomon's reign, we see it coming back to Biden, where he begins offering all of these sacrifices to other gods, and then Solomon's kingdom ends in a pretty steep decline. But at this point in the history, all this creates a huge problem for these writers. How could Solomon do all of these great things for the kingdom, build these fortification walls, build the temple, reign over a time of great success, be blessed with all of this prosperity? all the while not following the laws of the Torah. Many scholars believe that this story of Solomon's dream was actually a story made up and told later as a way of legitimizing Solomon's kingship and explaining how he was able to succeed for so long despite his real life shortcomings. And it's a surprisingly elegant solution too. If God gives him wisdom, then he can still be seen as blessed by God and all of that success that, out, that was attributed to Solomon can actually then be attributed to God. And its timing at the, beginning, at the beginning of Solomon's rule cuts off anyone else's claim to the throne. And it's a dream, so we know that no one else witnessed it, therefore no one can disprove it. As far as literary solutions go, that's pretty elegant. As a top it all off, it works because even though it might not have been historically accurate, it still told the Israelites and tells us something true about God. Not that God comes out of the sky like a genie in a lamp and gives us what we want when we want it, but that God is a God of abundance. In the Jewish tradition, there is a word of praise ascribed to God traditionally uh, in a sung in a song during the Passover celebration that celebrates the Hebrews exodus from Egypt. The word is dayenu. Has anyone heard of this word? Dayenu, yeah, a couple, okay. And it's translated often as it would have been enough. And so the concept goes like this, that God is such a God of abundant and generous blessing that God goes beyond what would, what would have been enough for us and gives us much more than we could have asked for. It would have been enough to free the Hebrews from the Egyptians, but God also parted the Red Sea and provided food for them in the wilderness. It would have been enough, but then God gave them the law on Mount Sinai and then led them to the promised land. And for Solomon, it would have been enough just for the wisdom to lead this great people. But in the same tradition of Dayenu, God also gives him riches and honor and a long life. 
That's why this story was not just propaganda, but also believable, because it still said something true about God. Now, we may not get the carte blanche like Solomon did, but I still believe that God gives us more than enough. A colleague of mine once told me um, that in one of her seminary classes, a professor got to talking about prayer and about how our prayers are answered. Whether we ask for love or wisdom or support or healing or strength, what God actually gives us is each other. Because we all reflect the divine image of God, that God could be found through each and every one of us. God gives us those around us to either give or receive those things that we need. Whether it's that strength or that healing or that wisdom, God gives us each other. And that will forever and always be enough. Now, that's not the way that God works in this passage, but I think it better fits to what we actually see in our day-to-day -day lives. This coming week, like Jim said earlier, session meets to decide how to best move forward with worship and with everything else going on in light of this recent wave of the pandemic. And it's decisions like this that require wisdom and courage and grace and love, all things that we pray for God to give us, right? And I don't know what that decision will be or what those decisions will be coming this Tuesday, but I'm pretty sure that whatever is decided Somebody probably won't like it. Heck, nobody may like it. That's entirely possible. We can pray that everyone loves it. Yeah. But I guarantee you in that meeting, and I hope in everything that we do as a church, that we pray for this wisdom and this grace and this courage and this love, and that through each other, through everyone here, God will provide it. And that will forever and always be. As we come to our invitation to the offering, I want to, to just take a second and think about how our offering is not just our ties, but it's also our time, our talents, our whole lives. How are we giving of our lives to not just support the church, but this community, this world, and everything that God calls us to do. Please join me in prayer. As we offer our gifts to you, O oh God, May we not stand by thinking we need only watch you go to work, but may we join you in feeding the hungry, in offering a welcome to outsiders, and building communities of peace and justice. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. have a list here of joys and concerns and then we will open up the floor. I guess we don't call it the floor. This the be, this is not a open, up the open up the lawn. Open up the lawn. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so first uh, Zachariah Cares is still in the hospital. Uh, so we continue to keep him in prayer as he goes through his recovery process. Continue prayers for B and Derexa. Uh, Dave Wilson is home following his knee surgery and doing well. Um, Tony DeRosa, I believe, is still uh, recovering from COVID. We also continue to keep Vlad and Jerry and Louise and the Kane and the March and the Tang families in our prayer, as well as Joe and Nancy. Those are the prayers that I have. What other joys and concerns do we have this morning? Yeah, Margaret. For the college students going off to college. Absolutely. God in your mercy. Yeah. We have we have a joy. Teresa Abbas received another master's in nursing. Ooh. Teresa Abbas. 
Teresa Abbas received her no another master's degree in nurse, right? nursing. I believe that's what uh, she said. And uh, also, also, please pray for the people in Haiti. And pray for the people in Haiti, absolutely. And also for those in Afghanistan as well. God, in your mercy, yeah. in our prayer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just on. For this, all the students returning to school. Absolutely. Teachers. teachers. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. For the teachers and the staff. God in your mercy. Yeah. 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 Yes. For Denise Ali, God in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? What's now sounds here? Let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy One, bridger of distances, connector of all beings, hear our prayer this day. In the midst of nonstop news stories about illness and scarcity, and numbers and trends and waves and wars, grant us quiet in our minds. In the midst of heightened anxiety about caregivers and caregiving, about health and hygiene, about schools and workplaces and teachers and students, grant us calm in our hearts. In the midst of opposing views, inside or outside, here or somewhere else, grant us peace in our spirits. In the midst of distance in our families, our faith communities, in all our relationships with others, grant us connection in our separation. In the midst of our lives, our gratitude and our concerns, our hopes and our longings, grant us an abiding sense of your comfort. And in the midst of this community, we raise those among us who need our spe special care and prayer this day. For Zach, and Lee, and Dave, and Tony, Vlad, Derexa, Jerry, Louise, Kane, and Marsh, and the Tang families, for Joe and Nancy, for Teresa, for Denise, for those countries facing greater struggles than our own. We pray these things in your name. As we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Divine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us sing together our closing hymn, Be Thou My Vision. <laughs>
unto the world in peace. Have courage, hold on to what is good, render unto no one evil for evil, strengthen the weak, support the faint-hearted, rejoicing always in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love both today and forevermore. And let us say it together, amen. Amen. Amen.